And we are joined by our good friend, as we do each and every single Wednesday, uh, Tuesday, rather, here on Superstation 101 on Yellowhammer Radio. It's okay. I'm trying to I'm trying to jump to Friday for some reason. I don't know why, but I keep wanting to think today's Wednesday. Today's Tuesday. You want to get to Friday because of what? The Gorsuch co- uh, nomination? Get Neil Gorsuch on the Supreme Court. There then, you go. Then That's I'm going to eat pizza and have a cold drink and just enjoy my weekend, go to church, come back, start over, do it all again on Monday. Okay. I'm just ready for the weekend. All right. That, hey, that's what I am ready for. We are almost through Tuesday, and then yes. it'll be Wednesday. Right, exactly. Okay? But we got to talk to Cord first. Yes, joined by our friend Cord Sachs with Fireseeds, who is leveraging 15 years of recruiting and leadership development experience. Cord launched Fireseeds to recruit dynamic leaders and install leader development strategies in a world-changing business. And we've been talking about for weeks and weeks now. We started out with uh, from the boardroom to the family room. And uh, continuing on our great conversation, well, let's welcome him in. Cord Sachs, welcome into Yellowhammer Radio. How's it going today? Doing great, Scott. Andrea, how are you guys? Living the dream, man. Yep. Living the dream. Dittos. Awesome. Living the dream. Awesome. So we today are going to talk about personal identity. Personal That's identity right. is what we're going to talk about today as we discuss boardroom to the family room. Now, personal identity um, depends on what show you're listening to. This has nothing to do with people changing. This is uh, Tell us what personal identity means. What, what do you actually mean when you say identity, Cord? That's right. It doesn't have anything to do with anybody changing. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with what's on your license or the uniqueness of your fingerprints. You know, what we mean is how you've been hardwired by God with a certain personality, certain strengths, certain preferences that are completely unique to you, that is your personal identity. And there's all sorts of identity assessments, personality assessments, temperament assessments out there on the market. They're very popular. Have you guys ever taken one of those? I I have not. I believe I have a while ago, um, I think a personality assessment. I'm not sure. It's not coming. You like it? Did, did you resonate with it? Did, did it was did it, was it uncomfortable? What was your impression? No, no. I think at the in the very end, it, it, it confirmed what you'd already suspected, and you just like, oh, okay, and and it almost kind of gave you permission to be who you are. Very good. That's I haven't taken one, though. but I know God made me an awesome human being, and I'm happy with who I am. I like my personality. Well, we <laughs> need to affirm that and, and do an assessment on you, just so you can you can you can understand how that all plays out. Okay, in life. and so. I know different people have different responses to that question. Some feel like, oh, I don't, I don't like him because I'm being put in a box. Other people do have aha moments in their lives where they say, wow, yes, that's who I am, uh, much like Andrea. And so today we're going to do the top ten reasons why understanding your identity should be a top priority for everyone. Oh, okay. Top ten reasons. All right. What would be the very first one that you would want to uh, tell us about? Well, Scott, I've given you all ten, so I'll let you kind of go down the list, and I'll make a brief comment on each one. How about that? Yeah, let's let's do that. We'll start at number ten because you know when David Letterman was doing his countdowns each and every night on TV, he started at number ten and worked his way back to oh, one. Can I we do see. that, Cord? Well, start with let's do that, but go and start with one down to ten in my list. All right, okay, that'll, that'll flow a little better. Okay, so mm-hmm. start with ten. All right, number ten. You can sound really smart when you can talk about three parts of the mind. That's right. The assessments, all the identity assessments out there help us really understand the three parts of our minds. So that's, that's, that's what we know. We know things, we feel things, and we do things. And, we can, and when we can understand how that, that practically applies in, in all the different areas of, of how we're going to interact with people and how we're going to accomplish tasks, and we can talk about that in a, in a, in a known way, it really it, it makes, us, it makes us sound smart. So that's, that's, number, that's number 10. All right, number nine, identity assessments helped us win World War II. Absolutely. World War I, soldiers were, were placed randomly into job positions. It wasn't until after World War I that the social scientists said, hey, if we can assess individuals based on their strengths, maybe we could then align them with jobs that would make sense instead of just randomly plugging one as the machinist and one as the pilot and one as the – the, the machine gunner, and, and this, these social scientists take a lot of credit for these, these assessments being introduced pre-World War II, and that being one of the main reasons we're not uh, a communist country today. Exactly. Okay, okay I'm going to read number three. It says here, number it eight. could, it could what would you say? Number eight. Number eight, oh, Andrea I'm, I'm Tice. sorry, you're right, okay. You're, I, I'm, I'm off on the numbers, but I've got it right. You say it we're could. We're on seven, though, so we're having a hard time counting, but down to seven. <laughs> down to seven. It could save your marriage. 
It could save your marriage, absolutely. In fact, it saved mine. The first five years of my marriage, I had no idea getting in how I could have known someone pre-marriage and then found out she was so different from me. And it wasn't until someone helped us and unpacked a couple identity assessments with us together that we realized where those differences came from. And, and when I came home as the visionary, excited about a brand new idea, and she would have a hundred questions for me, and I would walk out of the room deflated, uh, mm. I finally learned that was a strength for her to gain information before she could feel good about something. But until I knew that, I couldn't value that, and I saw that as a threat. Mm. So when I learned about our identities, I could, I could, we valued each other, and our marriage has, has not been the same since. Wow. Wow, that's great to hear. Number seven, people are definitely going to want to hear this one. It could earn you a promotion. That's right. I can't tell you how many times uh, we, we, we consult with, with different organizations, and let's just give you an example. They take the top sales guy, and they put that sales guy in the position of now the sales manager because it's the next rung on, uh, on, the, on the hierarchy of, of promotion. And what happens many times is that top sales, sales, sales guy, sales gal, she no longer gets to use what she's wired up and has done well with in light of her identity, and she's now managing processes and people. And so for many of us, it's, 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 in many situations, it's not the greatest salesperson that becomes the greatest sales manager or director. So understanding your identity and where to align your strengths can really help you know where to position best at work. Andrea Ty says number six. All right, it's no fun to have two people on one side of the seesaw. I mean, think about that. If you've got two people on one side of the seesaw, it's just not any fun. You don't get any movement. Yeah. So when I started my company, the number one thing I had to do is I had to find someone on the opposite that could sit on the opposite side of the seesaw. I'm a visionary. I'm an idea guy. I had to find someone who was detail-oriented that could, that could think about systems and processes and execute on all my grand ideas. And when I, do that, when I did that and found that person, that's my partner now, Justin Harris, uh, the seesaw is a lot more fun to be on when someone's on the opposite side. Yeah, that that is a very good point. I really appreciate detail people because that's not my strength for sure. Number five, when you buy your first NBA team, it could help. Wow, what's that about? That's right. That's, that's you, Scott. I know you're about to buy your first NBA team. But back in the late 90s, uh, the, the Phoenix Suns were last in the league. And they brought in assessment and identity specialist Kathy Colby to come in and introduce an identity assessment for each of the players and the coaches. And in just two years, after better understanding how you coach each player differently based on their identity and assessments, they went to number two in the division. So as soon as you want to buy that NBA team, you know the first thing you need to do is run assessments on your team and your coaches. Or, or not necessarily even something that big as an NBA team, but just your your small business. Absolutely. We apply that into small businesses, mid, mid-sized businesses, all the same. Number Absolutely. four. Accounting is only exciting for a chosen few. Oh, we do career and career coaching with a lot of college graduates, and we get asked to do that all the time. And every time, in every situation, I find one, one individual that's been in that family of lawyers or uh, been in that family of accountants and has this undue pressure to be an accountant just because there's five generations before them. Yeah. And guess what? They're not wired up to be detail-oriented and focused on, uh, on facts and information. They're, they might be creative and, and outgoing and, and need to be in a, a role that lets them spread their wings, and yet they spend, the five, they spend five years of their life miserable because they thought they should be an accountant just mm-hmm. like everybody else in their family. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Identity assessments will help us help us not have that happen. Yeah, right. All, all right, we're down to the final of about a minute and a half of the show, so let's go to number three. It's better to give than it is to receive. Better to give than it is to receive. One of the greatest things you can do is to validate somebody's identity. Mm. It's the greatest gift you can give someone is to truly understand how they're wired up and then affirm them in, in, in that identity. All right, now we're down to number two, all just want to be loved. We all just want to be loved. That's actually a half-truth. We all want to be loved, but really we all want to be fully known and fully loved. Mm, one, a- of, one, of the, one of the most challenging things is to, to be loved but think, and, and think that that love is conditional. It's based on me living up to something that I'm not. All right. When I can be fully known and fully loved, that's the key. All right. In the final 35 seconds, let's get to the number one reason. There's the drum roll. Our creator has works prepared in advance for us to do. 
That's right. There's a principle in Ephesians 2.10 that says God has created us, we are his workmanship, and he has works in advance that we might walk in them. And so when we understand how we're wired up, that gives us the clues, especially when we're making big decisions around our career, as to where he would lead us to have our next season of impact. Awesome stuff. Uh, Court sex. We have five seconds. We will talk to you again next Wednesday. Check them out online at Fire Seeds. We appreciate it, Court. Talk to you next week, man. Bye. Next week, man.